Welcome to Electro Online. We're now ready to start looking at some first order amplifying or operational amplifier circuits and we're going to show you some general methods of how to solve them. Well, what do we mean by solve them? Well, when we have a capacitor in the circuit, we would like to know the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor as a function of time. Notice that we have our feed resistor right here, R1. We have the uh, feedback resistor here and uh, over here we have a capacitor now we have several nodes we have node one here we have node two there and we have node three there what we're going to do in this video is concentrate on node one and use that right there to figure out the current uh, through the resistor and the voltage i should say the current through the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor some basics again, notice that the voltage at 2 is approximately equal to the voltage at 3. The voltage difference right here is very, very small. And since V3 is connected to ground, we can say that V2 is approximately equal to V3, which is equal to 0. Also, the voltage right here, voltage 1, would be equal to the positive end of the voltage on the capacitor. So we can say that V1 is equal to Vc, since node 2 is almost at zero so this would be a jump up from zero to vc and that should then be equal to the voltage at the node also by definition the current through the through the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage with respect to time the voltage across the capacitor of course and then we can also say that the current through the resistor in the direction drawn is equal to the difference of the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance and that would be equal to the final uh, voltage over here the voltage at node one minus the voltage here or no let me take that back the current the current through the resistor is equal to the difference in the voltage divided by the resistance and the difference in the voltage can be obtained by taking the higher voltage minus the lower voltage divided by the resistance now of course in this case we realize that this would be a higher voltage than zero so the current is actually flowing in, a, in the opposite direction but by definition if we assume the current to be in this direction the current will be zero minus v at one divided by the resistance so now we're ready to solve for those two equations and we're going to start with node 1 and we're going to say that the current into node 1 is equal to the current leaving node 1. In other words, the current I through the resistor must be equal to the current through the capacitor. Now the current through the resistor we found that to be minus V1 over R1. So that's equal to minus V1 over R1, and that's equal to I sub C, and I sub C is equal to the capacitance times dV dt. Notice, since V1 is equal to V sub C, and we know that this is the change of the voltage across the capacitor, we can then say that this is equal to minus V sub C over R1 is equal to C times dV across the capacitor dt. So now what we want to do is we want to separate the variables, have all the Vs on one side and everything else on the other side. So let's see here, what we can do is we can say that, um, bring the C down here, bring the DT over there. So minus DT divided by R1C, so that would be the time constant of the capacitor, is equal to DVC over V sub C. And now of course we can integrate both sides maybe we want to turn things around we can write this as dvc over v sub c is equal to minus dt over r1c and then if we integrate both sides we integrate the left side we integrate the right side what we end up with over here let's see here we have the natural log of v sub c the natural log of v sub c is equal to minus dt or minus t over r1c which is actually the time constant so we can say this as minus t over tau plus a constant of integration i'll call it k instead of c so we don't confuse it with the capacitance so now we're going to take the analog of both sides so when we do that we get v sub c is equal to e raised to the minus t over tau plus k so this can then be written as V sub C is equal to E to the minus T over tau times E to the K. And then if we solve this for K, we can set this equal to zero. So V sub C when T is equal to zero is equal to, well, we call that 
uh, V sub naught, the initial, the initial voltage, which is equal to E to the zero times E to the K. And so E to the zero is equal to one, and E to the K is then equal to V initial, so this becomes equal to V sub C is equal to the initial voltage across capacitor times E to the minus T over tau, where tau is equal to R1C. And so this gives us a, an equation, and maybe if we want to write it as a function of time, that makes a little bit more room here. So V sub C is the function of time, that makes it a little bit better, is equal to the initial voltage across capacitor times e to the minus t over tau, where tau is equal to R1C. So R1 is this resistor here, C is the capacitance of the capacitor. Then if you want to know the current, since the current is equal to C times dV dt, we can then say that uh, I, the current through the capacitor, is equal to the capacitance times this, so that would be C times V sub naught, times the derivative of the voltage to respect to time, so that would be times a minus 1 over tau, times e to the minus t, <coughs> excuse me. So that would be the derivative of this, so the times c, so t times v sub naught, times the derivative of the exponent, which is minus 1 over tau, and since tau is r1 times c, you can say that this is equal to minus cv, and 1 over tau, that would be divided by r sub 1c. And then we have e to the minus t over tau, can't forget the tau, minus t over tau. And then the c's cancel out. And so finally, if you want an equation for the current with respect to time, let's put that over here. So i cross capacitor as a function of time is going to be v over r1 v over r1 times e to the minus t over tau. And now we also have an expression for the current through the capacitor in terms of the, uh, well, v initial, can't, have, can't forget the initial, the initial voltage across capacitor divided by r1 times e to the minus t over tau, again tau being r1 times c. So there's our two expressions, one for the voltage across the capacitor and one for the current through the capacitor as a function of time, and that's how it's done.